even though it's good we're all in our own spaces because um that was actually fun with uh blast fest nervous fun <laughs> so welcome <laughs> to our conversation on Kwanzaa. <laughs> those of you that are joining us on the um, facebook group and um juice would you like to yeah um thank you all for joining whoever's there whoever will be there who should be there and who needs to be here is here um this is a, a small little talk about kwanzaa in order just to kind of express ourselves and our views on it it's not that any of us are experts on it it's not that we're regular contributors or celebrators of the the holiday, but here we are just to talk about it. Myself, Drew Salim, um, one of the lead people on Afroflux. We're also here with Charlotte Bailey, who's a filmmaker and um, everything, a comic <laughs> maker, writer, illustrator. We're also here with Anita Shervington, who's the head CEO of Blast Fest and Black Steam, which is, uh, does amazing work with educational uh, facilities and bringing that through into different means for, for expressing black um, brilliance, basically. And then we also have Rachel Brumfield here as well, who she says she's gonna take more of a, a background in, in here, but that background's so brilliant. We don't, we don't, um, we don't mind uh, wherever you wanna be. But so for those that um, are aware, someone just sent me a text not long ago, jokingly, I hope, saying that Kwanzaa, it looks like a made up word. And that has uh, been the, the accusation since it was created in 1966 by Mulana Karenga, um, AKA Ron, <laughs> Ronald Karenga or Ronald uh, McKinley in 1966. He was uh, a member and one of the founding members of the US organization which was part of the whole black power movement within the 60s. And the, the interesting thing is he did literally just make it up. You know, we need something that ties us to Africa, the continent, and we need something that allows us to be here because he took on the thought and the idea uh, of a quote from Malcolm X, where Malcolm had said, after, particularly during his, his uh, pilgrimages and the, the second one is the most famous one where the the book and the film um, mostly deal with Malcolm in Malcolm's life El Haj Malik El Shabazz and he said for those of us who can't make it to Africa we still have to put Africa in ourselves because that's where we're from and for those of us who can't make it we have to put those traditions and those cultures into our life that's a, a paraphrase and and Mulana Karenga took that and, and realize why so many people were, you know, feeling less than themselves within uh, American society, especially for black people. Because if you're always looking at the, the root of your, yourself as slavery, then obviously you're gonna, most people are not gonna be able to see themselves as anything but a slave. And so the idea is to tie back into various different great traditions of, you know, the majority of West Africa, Central Africa, and in doing that, um, Mulana took on, he, was a, he studied um, Arabic and Swahili and, and various different things within Americana studies. He was a member of uh, various groups like um, the SNCC, uh, CORE as well, which were all very powerful in the, in the 60s. And he was studying uh, Swahili, key Swahili and Arabic, as well as um, dabbling in other African cultures. So this is what allowed him to use and utilize the word and looking at his uh, Africana studies, use these, um, this research to find basic principles that were you know, um, in different cultures along the African cultures that he found. And he come up with what's known as the Nguzo Saba, the seven, the seven principles of Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa is a, a word that means um, has broken down from uh, Matunda Ya Kwanzaa, which is meaning the first fruits or the fruits of the harvest. And that was the idea in order for African-Americans or at the time Afro-Americans to have some sort of purpose and, and um, 
sense of awareness of themselves, not only in America, but coming from the African continent. So yeah, it's a, it's a made up thing, but which holiday isn't? <laughs> um, there, there's, there's that part. So what we're gonna do is just go through um, those of us who wish to speak in our awareness of, of Kwanzaa. And I'll start for myself. Um, I've been aware of it for many years. I've attended a few doings and I don't know how full they were, how much it was the full Kwanzaa celebration. They've been cool, but they've not necessarily been, um, they're eye-opening actually. And it's, you know, there's a sense of pride, but um, it's not something that I've, I've pursued fully in my life, but I'm glad it's there. It's one of these things that I'm glad it's there. There's, there's an alternative. I don't have to just buy all the, you know, all the presents and, and spend off all my money. And it's one of the things that I'm really glad of that's, that's there. Um, Charlotte, what's your, what's your uh, understanding of Kwanzaa? Yeah, honestly, it was just a few weeks ago. <laughs> you know, Anita mentioned it and I Googled it. And <laughs> um, since then, and now I thought, you know what, how is it I didn't know about this, first and foremost? And, um, you know, how much or how little do other people know about it? And what can we take from it? Um, like you, you were saying, it's an American, African-based um, celebration, but the principles are so universal. Um, so it got me curious, and this is where it's led me <laughs> into this conversation. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anita? Okay, so hi, everyone. So yeah. the question is, what was the question? What does what do we know of Kwanzaa? What, what does do it you know of Kwanzaa? What what does it mean to you without without super amounts of research? Just your awareness of it. Yeah, I haven't done any um, research on it, um, but I do think that I'm learning more about it and learning more about how it can be useful and fit into what we're maybe all trying to do. But when I think of well, where did I even um, come across? Um, you know, the, the celebration. And I think it was watching a different world. Ah. Yeah. It's a different world. Right. Because it wasn't something that, um, you know, we celebrated as a family growing up. Um, I think, you know, when you're from the Caribbean, my dad is from um, Guyana and um, him and my, one of my uncles came to the UK and settled in 1950, my dad settled in 1950. Um, but he had other uh, two brothers and a sister that went to America. And I think one of the things that's common in Caribbean families is that you will often have obviously family in the Caribbean, where you're from, um, the USA and Canada and, and here, you know, we've, we've got that triangle or whatever. Yeah. Um, and so naturally, as you keep in touch with the family, you will you know, you will exchange the gifts that you might get in the post or when people come over, you will, you begin to know um, more about how people do their version of black culture and identity, et cetera, wh wherever they are. Um, but I definitely think it was through watching a different world, but in terms of, um, you know, putting it on the list of, of something that I celebrate or the family celebrates, um, I think that's been kind of a layered process. And even now, I wouldn't necessarily go around saying we celebrate Kwanzaa. I have a sister that, that is, takes it more seriously and has the candles and lights them. Um, but the principles, you know, like the seven principles that you're going to go through and remind us of in a bit, Juice, right, um, are, <laughs> are, are, so, are so important. And I think even, you know, the things around harvest and things like that, where that never maybe resonated with me, you know, 10 years ago. It certainly does now as we think more about environmental issues and, and things like that. So it's basically becoming much more clearer as to how important these principles are, um, whether you want to call it, you know, um, follow the process of how, you know, the lighting of candles and all that kind of thing, which is not my, my thing. Definitely the principles are. And one of the things that I would say is, um, I mean, you know, sometimes you find yourself in a WhatsApp group and I'm in one and somebody has every day been posting somebody called Brian Simmons I'm just going to say that because I've been reading his hey Brian every day and you know today is um uh, Naya which is purpose the fifth principle 
And so, you know, he he kind of gives a bit of spiel about what it is and you can go to the website to find more. And he, you know, he sells merchandise and that kind of thing. I think it's a really useful um, way for us to explore the principles and um, I'll leave it there for now. Yeah, excellent. Rachel, what's your, what's your awareness today? Yeah, hi. Um, so I'd say again, like Charlotte, it's very, there, there wasn't, I didn't know much. <laughs> I didn't know much at all. Only, um, I, I only had sort of references from, you know, TV shows. It was always called The Black Christmas. Um, I had no idea that it was something that was a complete festival that had uh, different days and different elements and aspects to it that are really beautiful. Um, I, I only came across that side of things very recently when me and Charlotte were talking um, and I had no idea. Um, so again, just here to learn more and understand and um, take some of that on and uh, yeah, and share. I think it's really important to talk about this. So it's great, really, really cool, yeah. Yeah, um, thank you for that. It's interesting as well, the different sort of generational awarenesses uh, through time. And most of us have come about it through media, through, um, so, and we were just saying that it's, it seems to be, they say, they estimate one to 4% of African-Americans actually celebrate this in a serious manner. And yet the majority of us have heard of it somewhere through music, film, TV or whatnot. And as Anita says, the, the American thing, you know, people misunderstand a lot of the connections as well within um, a lot of black British culture is way more tied in um, across the oceans than people often consider. They, they often say, oh, well, why are you taking, why are you doing what they do? My, my dad spent like half of my life in the States. I have big brothers, big sisters, cousins, aunts, you know, great aunts, I spent time with them. I didn't grow up with them as such, but um, there was always communication, you know, going on. And so obviously hip hop was part of that, you know, um, musical things, cultural things and Kwanzaa being part of that. And so, as you say, when you get the idea that there's a deeper purpose behind this thing it's not just black christmas i mean that's the surface level the surface layer and as, as uh, neat was saying as you get older each thing means a little bit more um to you so i, I knew these principles i've heard them in, even in, in in rap songs and whatnot but then when you start to see collectives of art and business with those names and those titles you'll see those around in in brixton in, in hansworth and various different places throughout the UK and they're called Umoja, they're called U U Ujima and you know they have these names and, and you realize what it is. My daughter's name is Imani, um, not through Kwanzaa but just through the, the, the Swahili word, the, the meaning of faith because at the time I, I kind of said to myself I didn't have much faith in, in, a, in a you know in an outer um, realm in a, in a creator or a god or something outside of myself so i said let my daughter and my children be my faith so um uh charlotte do you have the 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 seven principles the yeah. you know we're gonna we're gonna go through them and um see what they mean to us as well so just to run through them then we've had the um can you, see, can you see my screen okay? Yeah, yeah. Great. Great. Yeah, so um, Juju, you've already been given a really great introduction to this. And like I said, I'm new to Kwanzaa, so this is the Google search. <laughs> <laughs> so feel free to come in at any point um, <laughs> and add or, or correct. Um, so yes, uh, Dr. Karenga was an activist and leader of the Black Power Movement and created Kwanzaa for Afro-Americans in 1966 as a response to the commercialism of Christmas. Um, so yeah, it is, it is fairly new. The word there that I'm interested in is the Afro for Afro-Americans, because obviously I'm, I'm Black Caribbean British, and I still see relevancy on, on this side of the pond, but that's for the discussion. 
um, yeah. specifically because Kwanzaa was a holiday created for Black people to honor their African roots and reaffirm their cultural connections because we can never know ourselves if we don't know our history. And again, that resonates with me because of that, um, dare I say, disconnect via the Caribbean, you know, from Africa, via the Caribbean to Britain and that relationship, you know, um, you know, when it comes to Afrofuturism, Af the Afro is it, you know, initially I thought it was leaning more towards African, but again, for discussion. So <laughs> it's interesting. And then in the 80s, um, Ebony magazine wrote that, that it's um, dubbed it the new soul Christmas, like um, Rachel was saying, Black Christmas. Yeah. Um, all about Black Pride, placing emphasis on roots and family. It's, it's interesting to just go back to that slide there. Um, yeah. um, a lot of people didn't have awareness of it till about the 80s. Right. You know, so even though it existed, um, say in 66, but my, myself, when Anita would have heard of it, when Different World was on TV. This was the 80s, this was the late 80s, early 90s. So a lot of people, in, in, including in the US, unless you were in that sort of black power, Pan-African black power movement on the West Coast, um, you might not have heard of it for another 10 years, you know? Um, and that's something to, to keep in mind to, till it was, again, media, um, Ebony, December, 1983. So, that's an important thing to, to keep in mind, the, the awareness of things and what else was happening at these times. Like 66, we're coming out of, you know, Martin, Malcolm and all, all those kind of things. But then by the 80s, this is, this is at the same time, not only of um, crack and AIDS and all these different things and the, the, the continuing degradation of cities such as Detroit and whatnot, but also the the rise of um, the, the kind of talk show host and, you know, the Donahue TV shows and the, the Ricky Lakes and whatever. So these would have also propagated these kind of ideas as well. Back to you. <laughs> yeah. And going back to what we said as well about Christmas being more, you know, less about the, because we've got that awareness of the, you know, it came from paganism and Jesus wasn't really born there and it's all commercialist like we have that awareness but we all agree that it's still a time where we have that time off work for family yeah. um so special emphasis on roots and family togetherness already and I also I, what also interested me is that you um celebrate it as well as Christmas it doesn't it doesn't touch yeah. the toes of Christmas or Hanukkah or anything else that you want to celebrate yeah. or do not celebrate it's um it's about something that transcends that um and works together with it. So. Yeah. Yeah. So going into the principles then, um, so it's on the 26th of the 1st of uh, January. Um, the first principle is of unity. So community, family, nation, race. And uh, there's something, well, I'm gonna get into it, but there's um, objects that cement that. So like the unity cup and the eldest um, member, I think drinks first to symbolize it. This looks familiar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah. Um, that's another slide. But yes, unity, umoja. Umoja, yeah. Umoja, and then you have got the twenty uh, seventh. So the next day, self determination. Kuji Jakulea. Thank you, oh. sir. <laughs> <laughs> you define oh, that one. <laughs> yeah, and I love this one to define ourselves, name ourselves, create for ourselves, and speak for ourselves. That is that is essentially what Kwanzaa is about, is it not? And yeah, most going definitely. back to the roots, um, and, and as you African said, yeah, and African roots. So, within the majority of us, are always at a, a, a crossroads. Even when we get our DNA done, you know, people are getting these twenty three and Me um, and putting their cells on databases, even more databases. But we're finding out um, elements of where we're from. But that does never give you the whole. It can never give you the whole. That may just go down the matrilineal path or, or, or the patrilineal path or whatever, but it will only say you are 40% from this part of Ghana. So that means there's still 60% of, of elsewhere, depending on your, your makeup and how much of you is African. So when you get to define and determine yourself for yourself, this becomes one of the biggest things in, in history for you to turn around and say, well, I'm this, this is who I am, whether you, whether you believe me or not, 
or not, you know, and again, to talk about um, the holidays that it's between, you know, um, uh, Hanukkah and, um, and Christmas and, and other various other uh, holidays, they're as real or as made up, they're just done at a longer period of time because um, it's interesting as well that though he got criticized for it as a lot of people do, and we see it happening now with certain members of um, organizations where they get accused of being, you know, communists or socialists, like it's the, and, and he himself had that accusation and he would sort of define himself as a secular humanist. So it's up to you to decide how Christmassy as an individual for your self-determination, how Christmassy you want your Kwanzaa to be, you know, or, or, how, or how much not to be, how African, how many gifts you give, how many gifts you don't give, if it's just about the harvest and the fruit and the talents and the, and the, the poetry of, of Kwanzaa as well. So yeah, to speak for ourselves. Collective Works and Responsibility, 28th of December, or Jima. Jima. Or Jima. So to build and maintain our community and make our brothers and sisters' problems our problems and solve them together, which made, immediately made me think of um, the Black Lives Matter movement, things going on in America, coming over here because it's a shared thing. Um, so again, um, Anita touched on the relevancy today. And you know, in 2020, look how big the BLM movement got. So when I saw that principle, I was like, right. And of course, you know, even beyond that, um, the idea of taking taking ownership of what we can do um, for each other and the community, um, mm. for each other, you know, that again, it's a principle that transcends, um, that, you know, the celebrations. Um, cooperative economics. Immediately, I thought of um, you know Black Pound Day and um, uh, you know, there's, there's Facebook groups that that exploded, and again during the BLM movement, um, you know, Black economics to build and maintain our own store shops, other businesses, and to profit from them together. Yeah, you know, and it made me think about uh, how many Jamaican restaurants and Jamaican shops I see in Britain. You know, walking down the street, growing up. Um, I went to a talk on it as well about how we weren't really raised to specifically go to those shops because at the time and when you did about the service and and also just the, the, how many of them like how, how many do you see so um again in 2020 cooperative economics ujama ujama yeah it's very important um and something that's still not being contained enough uh within the black community when people talk about how quickly money leaves mm you know, uh, black areas or black shops. Um, and interestingly enough, the picture that you chose is from, um, I think, was it the first or the second Fluxcon? I think, was it, it, was the, the, I think it was the first. Was it the first one? And so these, these uh, young ladies from, uh, uh, at the time they were called um, Squish House. They've changed their name now, but they have a clothing uh, company that's on the left of the picture. And on the right, we have um, K, uh, um, Kay and Joseph with uh, Square Biz clothing. So you can see the, the uh, Marcus Garvey um, t-shirt there. And so they definitely, those, those two companies definitely practice uh, a form of economics that is, you know, about not only, um, not only form of economics, but it's also cultural as well in regards to the clothing. You see the anks and various different things on the clothing. So it's also an empowering thing as well to have this, this uh, cooperative economics of, of Ujama as well. So um, yeah, really powerful thing. And I also, I almost put the image from um, the mangrove on there as well from the BBC series, Small Axe on, um, on the BBC at the moment, um, because the, there are scenes from the um, episode where they talk about, you know, there's this Jamaican restaurant and, um, it was, it was for the community, it became for the community, that business, because that was a safe meeting space, you know, more or less, given the amount of times the police, you know, invaded it. But, um, you know, so 
it's the, it, the, the, there's a consciousness writhing around that, has been, yeah. has always yeah. been. That, again, the principle is very valid wherever. Yeah. Um, and today, 30th of December, like Anita said, near purpose. Yeah. Um, yeah. In our community, in order to restore our people to their traditional greatness. It's interesting that they've interpreted purpose as that specifically, because just seeing the word purpose, I would have assumed that it was just defining your purpose. Um, but it's been defined for us, um, yeah. as far as I can tell from yeah. what I've read. Yeah. Well, there's always um, there's always individual purpose and group purpose, and right. and then obviously anything like this, you take it on as as an individual with your purpose, and then as a group, it is an interesting thing. Traditional greatness, because people are questioning these kind of yeah. phrases um like are we gonna rep are we gonna replace one form of colonialism with another you know that's um are all forms of colonialism equally bad or equally good for the 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 colonist so yeah but what is your purpose mm. how do you how do you find that how do you define that um yeah, it's an, an interesting thing, Purpose. Uh, the film, I don't know if any of you have seen the film Soul, the yeah. recent uh, Disney Pixar thing, and that kind of deals with that kind of thing, your spark, your purpose, your, your reason for being, you know, what is it? Um, yeah, and uh, that, that picture there is uh, from the, yeah, from the first Flux kind and the Lucid, um, the Lucid creative team. And they kind of have a definite purpose, you know. They're very, very driven, and they they're using the economics as well within their within their purpose. So they've got a whole thing with video games, comic ties into the film, ties into the dance moves, ties into the. Um, I think they have an animation as well in, on the way. So yeah, they found their purpose. How do we find ours? It's interesting that you mentioned um, soul as well, because the purpose in the end turned out to be just to live, <laughs> you know, like that, and, and arguably, you know, it reminds me of that other poem that was in um, Lovecraft Country, you know, catch your fire, don't kill, you know, live, 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 live. That's the end of the, you know, that idea of you know, purpose being just to, to, to yeah, to live. <laughs> mm. and, and that's not that easy for, yeah. Yeah, I think um, also, you know, with the seven principles, we can we can weave in and out of all of them because I think what you've just what you're talking about there in regards to purpose. Um, and the, I did watch Soul yesterday, last night actually. Yeah. Yeah. Is again, it's a, it is about self determination mm. as an individual, mm. and then obviously as a community or, or collect, uh, collectively as well. And I certainly think that I think it was in the Ebony quote that you had on early on. Um, Charlotte, um, something to do with, um, uh, you know, to do, it's something that makes reference to collectively black people wanting to, um, I mean, unless you go back to it, I don't remember what it says, oh, okay. but I think that we can all agree regardless of whatever religion, na nationality, where we're from, our positions in the world, our, you know, status, whatever. I think that I'd be shocked to, 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 to imagine that there are not that we don't all have a collective desire to improve our global situation as black mm. people, yeah. you know, and, and for those that don't, it's maybe just because they haven't switched on yet. Right. I think it's, it, it, it's, yeah. So yes, self-determination is, is really important. Yeah. Yeah. As a purpose. <laughs> yeah. 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 And tomorrow we're coming into um, Kumba creativity uh, to leave our community more beautiful and beneficial than we inherited it. And as a filmmaker, artist, writer, I resonate with that one. <laughs> I like that one. Um, to leave our community more beautiful and beneficial than we inherited it. Creativity, yeah. And um, faith is the 1st of January, which is a wonderful um, way to start the new year, is it not, Imani? Um, belief in ourselves, our people, parents. Leaders triggered me, <laughs> faith in our leaders. 
but I guess that's the leaders we choose. So in the communities that we choose to be a part of and hope for a fruitful year ahead. Mm. Um, what, what was the trigger with leaders? Boris and Trump. And ah, you think they celebrate Kwanzaa? Okay, right. If it's within the, <laughs> within the community, like I said, if it's within the community of, you know, the Kwanzaa celebrators, that's different. But when I initially read Belief in Our Leaders, I was like, ugh, <laughs> do I mm. have to? But you know. there's, there's, there's leaders and then there's leaders, right? So there's, um, you know, yeah, there's leaders and then there's leaders. That's all I, that's all I say. I didn't, Boris didn't even come to mind. So of course he's the, the leader of the Conservative Party and right. uh, government and that kind of thing. But he didn't actually come to mind <laughs> when, we, uh, when we thought of leader, leaders or le leadership, right? Um, yeah. And, it, you know, leadership begins with personal leadership as well which still comes back to to, to self you know um yeah belief in self yeah yeah so I, I i i love i love this one i love all of them um and again you know there there is this in there is this you know epidemic you know this feeling of not being good enough within the black community because it's you know it's put there <laughs> especially when we're alien, you know, made to feel like aliens in our home countries um, sometimes. So belief in ourselves, I think it's an important thing to remind ourselves at the beginning of a new year that that's what's going to overcome any other op obstacle we face. It's going to be belief, um, you know, because who else is going to, who else can do it? So. Yeah, no, nobody but us. <laughs> nobody but us, yeah. Yeah. So, and I'm just going to whiz through um, the final bit because I'm, I'm, I'm eager. So to yeah, a lot of them, we haven't talked about the actual, you saw the candles earlier for those that were uh, here earlier. So those seven principles are represented by seven candles and um, the each candle is, is, you know, burnt as the day goes. So you have three, uh, three that are green, three that are red and the single, the one in the, in the center is, is black and those represent the Pan-African colors of red, black, and green, which have been used and utilized by many different organizations, especially from um, um, Marcus Garvey, uh, the UNIA, the Universal Negro Improvement Association, which is, it's debated who was the first person to, to use those colors, but a lot of organizations have used those since, um, uh, including certain sects of uh, Rastafari and whatnot. But um, a lot of it as well, the, the avoiding the commercial element, because as I was saying in the eighties, people cottoned on to the fact that they could sell this thing. And so you managed to get cards and things. So the mm. commercial element came back in. Um, so this is why it's important for black folks worldwide from wherever they are to take control because someone else, there'll always be a, a hallmark or whatever to capitalize on anything they can, can make money on. So um, that, again, that advertised Kwanzaa, but um, it should be in the hands of those that it's, that it's for. Um, so yeah, here you go. Yeah, Shuma Saba and Kinara, the candle, the candle uh, holder um, and the whole thing. Colors represent black people, our struggles and hope. Thank you, I hadn't seen this. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, another element of the crops, the mazo, which um, and Anita mentioned again about, um, what were you saying? You were saying that the harvest, what were you saying before? Um, I was saying that, you know, the different principles um, and around the harvest element, I think that in more recent years that has, become much more clear to me about its, its in, importance because of how it links to um, hopefully how we're all thinking more around the, the planet and, and mm. seasons and rhythms yeah. and how we work with and live with the planet um, and how much, um, you know, some of the things that this is meant to counter around the capitalism attached to Christmas and that kind of thing. Um, and the commercial element uh, and how that plays into the destruction of the planet and what what is our role within that so there and of course you know uh, food, food is, is culture when we look at when we explore culture in it from you know from its different angles food 
um, and food ways are, are so much part of that as well. So, um, so I, like, like I said, um, you know, every day with the, the WhatsApp messages that I've been receiving, uh, they remind us ab about what, what Kwanzaa represents as well. The more and more it's becoming more clear um, how relevant it is and how we make that more relevant for us here um, in the UK. Mm. You know, one of the things that was said earlier, I think um, Jushi said that somebody said, uh, it sounds like a made up word. Mm. <laughs> I'm not sure, somebody needs to talk to me about the spelling, right? Yeah. But, um, but made up, everything's made up. I would say it's reclaimed, right? Mm. It's curated. Yeah, yeah. 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 It, it's yeah. reclaimed and it's curated and it's, um, and it's, it, it's curating something working with what already exists, which is the fact that it's a holiday period, whichever holiday it is that people um, celebrate. And, um, and it's um, being intentional with it for a specific purpose. And um, yeah, so I would say it's, it's being reclaimed and curated rather than invented because everything is invented. And another thing that I would say as well, obviously the main thing that we have in common um, on a kind of a, you know, kind of a, a his, historic kind of a, a path, a journey of similarity with people in America. So obviously, um, you know, if you're from the Caribbean around or, or the Americas, the, the enslavement element of it as well and the fragmentation of many things, but then um, how we take the fragmented pieces and bring them back together and piece them together to build something really strong. You know, we have that, um, in common um yeah kind of i lost my thread a little bit there uh but I, in fact i watched something yesterday that was about um quilting you know like the tradition of making quilts mm. and you know kind of taking the the fragments the whether it's in food ways or whatever the scraps or what's left and what you can get and 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 out of that being so creative in building something and making mm. something out of what you're able to get hold of it's just um there's a lot there's so much to be proud of yeah there's so much to be proud of it's it's within the diaspora and which is what we are um i mean i'm caribbean two different islands that i didn't grow up in that i don't know very well i only know via my, what my mother and father have told me and uncles and so my whole existence is uh, this kind of um, patchwork as such, a curation of what I want to take on, what I need to take on. Even the language that Karenga used is Swahili, which is from mostly from the other side of Africa as, as such, which is partly created to help the slave trade on that side of the, of the continent through mixing with um, Arabic and Bantu languages. And so people could trade better throughout, you know, um, the eastern coast of of um, of the of, of the African continent and, and Zanzibar, and even those words become derogatory within within uh, Swahili and Arabic. Zanj, zinj, zinj, zunuj. These these can be used as a, you know, Negro, black, blackie. You know, these can be word used in that way. So even that that. The word for the place is based on trade, you know, slave trade usually and, and trinkets and colonization. So you have to start to pick, if you are actually looking at uh, uh, being able to stand proud in the world, it's not that you deny uh, any of the negatives that have happened to you or happened with you or anything, but if you are able to stand tall above, um, above trauma, was, I, I'm not into selling trauma in that way. You know, we have so much music and film that often with blackness, it's, it's around trauma. And so in order to stand up above that, you have to pick and choose where, and you know, decide what battles to fight, um, decide which name you're gonna have. If you're gonna use a, a Swahili name, a Bantu name, an Arabic name, a, 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 made, a made up name, you know, maybe you might, might call yourself Jusalim or something like that. and some people will laugh and go, oh, is it like this kind of Jews? But you have to be able to stand proud and stand above that because that is the black experience in the diaspora. 
and, and, and Kwanzaa is a big part of that in the sense of, like I say, most of us have an awareness of it, even if we don't practice it. And as you said, Anita, you know, you get older and food means something different to you. Food was just something I used to stuff into my face once upon a time and, and it kept me able to run around and stay out late and not come home for days. But now I realize how the depth of food, every culture has food, every people has food. Food, clothing and shelter are three of the most basic things you can have in any society. And food in, in many cultures is symbolic of, of, of and to God or the highest form because it's the thing that you, you, in, you, know, you take in to keep you alive. As you see in um, traditions like Christianity, you know, transubstantiation of you know, the wafer mm. in um, Catholicism and things. So food is symbolic to God, you know, manna, manna from heaven. They used to talk about manna from, you know, manna from the heavens. So it's very important what you, what you call yourself um, and what you allow others to call you as well. I think um, what you say about names is really interesting as well, because I think, again, um, you know, sometimes when we talk about, um, you know, like culture and ways, like it's like these, we tend to think about things that, you know, somebody decided or people decided many years ago and it's, you know, how do we, we find out about these traditions so that we can, um, so the things that come to mind is choice, that we have the choice, we can choose, right? And we can uh, reclaim and rename and, and, and create. So, um, and I think that when you look at who creates names these days, is it not only, isn't it us? You know, like you just said Juicely, but sometimes when we, la we do, sometimes we laugh, you know, at where people piece together names from whatever, whatever kind of um, origin they're from. But I think that's something that right now is unique to um, uh, black people, again, that are, um, especially people that have had that massive disruption of slavery in their, their journey, right? Whether it's, you know, people here, the Caribbean, USA, wherever, we make up names, right? Every, everybody else tends to kind of have the names that, they've, that have always existed or existed for a long time. Whereas we might piece them together again, this patchwork, and making something new. So there's a massive, massive creativity that I think that, um, like I think, I think in past times, people have even laughed at some of that because it's a symbol of, um, a sign of self-determination to say, well, you know, I'm gonna to piece together my own name. How about that? It really is. Yeah. Where people laugh at the Lakeishas and the, the, it's a ghetto name. It's so, actually it's so classist and so racist. Yeah. For people of usually inner city, um, urban environments across the Americas to make up their own name, as you say, as you point out, so is beautiful. It's yeah. actually one of the most beautiful things you could ever do. Yeah. So within your supposedly not educated, not culturally aware, not historically sensitive self, you've managed to attach some form of Africanness in your name and then make it modern. You've modernized a name. A lot of those names are actually have an African base you know, the, the Nikishas and the Laquishas and the people laugh and they make jokes about it throughout many comedy shows. Mm -hmm. When you look at the name, it's usually like an African sounding name. And then someone added a, 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 a suffix to it, like maybe a, a, a Latin sounding suffix. So then, you, you know, like a Latoya or something like that, you know, um, uh, Thandalia or something like that. So you add, Thandi is a, a very African name but then you might add something to it, like I say, Latins uh, at the end of it. So we're doing that day in, day out. It's this beautiful form of uh, creation. And that's what Afroflux is, is all about, this, this continual recycle of renewal and interweaving itself. Um, so as we, we're gonna work towards closing up now um, in, in, a, in a little bit, but what are the negatives? Because again, as usual, it's an American thing. We've said the reasons and the connections. What, what, when I say the negatives, I mean, we haven't even talked about uh, Molana Karenga himself and some of the things he's been accused of, um, not always in the best, you know, uh, um, was imprisoned for, uh, um, you know, violent acts against uh, a couple of women. Also his, his group, the US organization, 
was at times at heads, you know, at loggerheads with Black Panthers and other movements and actually ended up, you know, fighting. And this was part of uh, COINTELPRO as well. And some people have said that the, the realized, the, um, I mean, Milana Karenga is still alive as far as I know. Some people have said that, so you'd have to get the truth from him, but some people have said that he knowingly was in connection and cahoots with police. Cause this is how you get guns in to 1960s Watts and Compton and San Francisco and the Bay. This is how you get guns. You have to know someone in the military or in the police or something. If you were in a black group, you don't just roll down to target and buy a hundred guns for the, for the man them, you know what I mean? Like on, on, on the ends. So you have to have these connections, but supposedly they, you know, the FBI would send, I mean, not even supposed this is fact. The FBI had sent various different messages to Panthers and us members to cause friction and, and ended up with, you know, people losing their lives and been imprisoned and all sorts of things. Um, so I just wanted to cover that. It's not that we have to go into it. My point is there's negatives in these things. Um, we can see the positive, there are negatives. We in Britain are not African-Americans though we have these connections. Um, we are Africans from the Americas. Um, what is our tradition here? So we can use these, I think we can use these, uh, these principles, the Emoja, the Kuchijakalea, Ujima, Ujama, Nia, Kuumba and Imani, we can use that most definitely. Every day we can use that. We don't have to wait mm. till once a year. But what is our tradition? What's the closest to our thing as, and for anyone that's out there who's, who is African or has African background, do you know your, your harvest tradition? You know, if you are Yoruba or Fulani or whatever, you know, or Zulu, do you know your, your tradition? Do you know your tradition, Anita? I think it's it's on it's ongoing, right? So like I said, um, you know, my dad um, is from the Caribbean, Guyana specifically. So although there will be lots of similarities, especially with like places like Trinidad on a cultural level and all the islands, then we then people arrive here and then we have that, you know, that blended, um, you know, we would have grown up um, a lot more. So certainly I much more saw Jamaican culture than Guyanese just because um you know of the of the representation right I mean Guyana right now the, the official population is 750,000 and it's the size of England right mm -hmm. so you can imagine the diet you know in the UK I rarely meet people from Guyana in, in in um in Birmingham so it was really this is why the Christmas time <laughs> was an important time for us because this is when people would get in the car and travel to Liverpool or from Liverpool, you know, like where my dad's friends and family were and things like that to, 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 to reconnect and, and, and come together. And, and of course, with, um, you know, what we talked about before about the influence of America, whether, whether it, uh, black America or just America in the world in general, mm -hmm. right. Um, then that will have an influence. So there's all these, there's all these blends. Right. And I think, I don't know about everyone, but I'm certainly interested in the whole of the African diaspora. True. You know, um, I'm really, really interested in the, the genealogy of African ways and how they have blended and um, evolved and all the rest of it in their different environments, whether it's, you know, Pakistan, Portugal, the UK, somewhere, somewhere else. And so I think, um, I mean, I think it's when you look at culture, it's kind of like you kind of look back and say, well, what did we do? How did we do that? Do you know what I mean? In terms, in terms of like saying today, what is your culture? I don't, I don't have a straight up answer. It's this. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a blended experience. And some of that is what we inherit in terms of ways. And then sometimes we think, actually, we don't want that anymore. We don't like that way. That way doesn't suit. I see where that comes from. Let's put mm -hmm. that there. And let's take on some of that because that's that's what I how I make sense of the world now, and this is what I want to pass on. You know, we we tend to create for our children the environment that we want for them, right? Mm -hmm. um, and if, you know, I have two daughters, and at some point, I'm sure I'll have grand grandchildren, and I'll be thinking about 
curating for them what their experiences and, and making sure that the things that are important that nourish and inspire and uplift and all these things will be part of that and I'll pick and choose from wherever I, I, I see something that means a lot to me and that may be outside of what is um, African um, cult. and when I say African wherever you go I, I think you know what we talked about earlier to do with naming I think if you are the, a person of African heritage, whatever you name is also that it doesn't have to come from the continent to get what I mean, right? Because mm -hmm. we, we, we evolve and all our contributions are relevant and we share them, right? So, um, and what I do want to say, can you see this? <laughs> so you mentioned Swahili. I don't know if you went to the last Pan-African event that uh, Kai, Kai Andrews organized at BCU but there was a guy from Spain who gave a talk. I think he gave the last keynote. I can't remember his name. And one of the things that he proposed was um, that, that all African heritage people around the world should learn Swahili so that, although you just kind of mentioned some of the, the origins, but it, you know, the importance of language. I can only speak English, right? But I got my book there, right? And I went to Kenya last year and I wanted to learn Swahili. I was talking to one of my African friends today about you know swapping knowledge around language origins and, and, and things like that so um yeah so i kind of I, I'll, I'll leave it there because I'm, I'm, I'm going on no, it's brilliant and, and swahili is very important for a lot of reasons because of its that amalgam and the syntax and you can use it over the, a majority of the continent and therefore with the majority of people that come from the continent as well um uh, rachel or charlotte what would you say your harvest principle, your harvest tradition, your harvest culture is? What is my harvest tradition? Well, at the moment, you know, it is embedded in, because Christmas is that time, it is the um, present giving, it's a huge part of it. So the bit that I really like, I, I like everything about what I've heard about Kwanzaa, but a part that I really like was, um, I didn't get to the end of the presentation, but the gift giving on the um, final day is um, homemade gifts or books. And it's to, you know, to encourage education, you know, going for something, um, you know, patience, diligence, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so if I were to, if I were to celebrate Kwanzaa in 2021, it would, and to cultivate, like you said, Anita, for the next generation reason, because I'm the eldest of um, four sisters. So if I was to, you know, bring that in as a kind of leader in my family, it would be that aspect. It would be, um, the e that would be the easiest way um, because of the culture that I'm currently embedded in in the, in the, in the UK. Um, the rest of the traditions would take some thinking, I think, I'm not sure, but yeah. Rachel? No, brilliant. Thank you, Charlotte. Yeah, um, speaking of, sort of the harvest side of things, I think with everything that's happened this year, it does really make you aware of the time that you're giving to certain things and the energy that you're putting into certain things. So I think moving forward, obviously this is something that we're very, for me, very newly discussing. Um, so I feel like moving forward, harvest and time and money and effort and energy would be the, the elements that I would be giving and, and encouraging other people to sort of join in with. Um, I think another point, and another important point is just being involved more in creative collectives. Um, it's something that I've, I sometimes do put on the back burner, but I, I really need to just be like, okay, let's just do it and subscribe and get involved and share more of, of my work and um, also to, to collect and take on and read and support other people's work as well. I think that's really, really important. So the harvest kind of goes both ways. You give in, you sow and you know you reap and give back as well kind of also a biblical thing that is reaping what you sow and all that sort of thing so yeah I think that's my take on it it's it's really eye-opening to talk about it so I feel like this has been really great so uh, yeah. yeah definitely going to be taking on elements and mm -hmm. and and 
you know, connecting in future and continuing to connect with it. Yeah, it's great. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. One of the, um, there, I, I've said it, I think we were talking about this the other day, Charlotte, and I think Anita as well. Um, one of the first things that I got into various different contentions with my family over the years, as you come into new bodies of knowledge and you come home and you like, I ain't eating no pork no more, you know, like, and then yum them things again, you know, you get into all kind of issues. And it's not that we had a lot of pork, but there was, it was still there. And as time goes on, you start, and then Christmas was one of these things. And I would be reading up and like, you're not supposed to bring the tree into the house and you're not the tinsel. And if you're a believer, then it's going against your own tradition. And there was a whole load of uh, information from mainly from Rastas and the Nation of Islam and people. And there was a particular uh, Farrakhan speech that um, was talking about how people, particularly mothers, but people, families in general, go to so much hardships throughout the year to get their little children the, the new computer and some socks and some food and extra food and the turkey and the this and the pigs in the blanket and the, the only to give this credit to this this fat white guy that's coming down your chimney from the North Pole. So you're giving the credit to him and then you've broke yourself and you're 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 in debt till you know June to pay back for all the you know the extra loans that a lot of mothers would have to do after working two and three jobs. And then they have to get, you know, these uh, people that used to come to the door, you know, oh, you've got to give us, you know, five pound back a week. You, you, you had a hamper, Christmas hamper, or you had this and you, you bought a PlayStation for the kids. Um, to give credit to ourselves, again, this uh, part of self-determination, part of cooperative economics, part of, to give credit to ourselves. And in that, um, one of the things, um, sorry to have cut you there, Charlotte, with the presentation, but as you say, the giving of books and gifts, but handmade gifts, like you, uh, you were saying there, Rachel, art, creativity to be involved. Um, what do you see yourselves giving next year? What do you see yourselves making, being involved with next year? All from now on. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all presented out personally. I'll think about it. <laughs> um, I think for me, I, I love, um, you know, drawing and uh, writing as well. I write poetry. So I'd say maybe writing for people, giving people my work um, and encouraging other people. Again, I'm just encouraging other people to share too. So I, I imagine, you know, cards, painted cards, um, necklaces, bracelets, things like that, just handmade. I love the idea that it's handmade. Yeah. yeah. I think that's something that's There's really so beautiful. much more to it. Yeah. And, and that's something I only learned the other day from speaking with you, Shah. So, um, yeah, I think that's a, a really beautiful element and, uh, yeah, definitely something that I would want to take on and, and, and do in future. Simple gifts. Yeah. Um, I've done in the past, not necessarily because of Kwanzaa, but I look to do much more of that because I give less Christmas gifts over the years, but then I don't always replace it with anything. This is the thing. When you take away some things, you have to be aware what you're replacing them with. When I, when I took the tree down in my house and the tinsel and the lights and the gifts and had less this and took that away, now what have I got? To be able to replace it with something is is of, of to me of vast importance. Um, yeah, it's of vast importance to be able to, you know, you can't just come and usurp things and displace things because people want that thing. If you take someone's love away, they're going to push the love somewhere else. If you take their need for touch, it's going to go somewhere else. Um, so you have to be able to replace whatever it is, and that's what I give credit to Molana Karenga for. And um, also credit to you guys for just partaking in this because none of us are anywhere near close to experts. And, and um, it's an interesting thing to talk about as well in the sense of how much it could affect you because it's, it's, it's 
one it's an abstract but as like for charlotte you you were you became aware of it how long ago yeah anisa when did we have a when did you mention it <laughs> like two yeah, weeks ago two, yeah something like that yeah i don't even yeah. remember i don't even remember mentioning it's it so actually. passing <laughs> but, but, but it, was, it was utterly in passing but i was like hang on there's a there's a, there's a black culture festival yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I think what i mentioned is so obviously um we we, we do events that fuse um you know science black arts and culture and a couple of years ago we did do an event during kwanzaa in fact it would have been yesterday because i got that reminder on my phone with kind of the, the the images and so it was a black uh we called it a black panther family stem day and so we watched we screened the film but we also had you know drumming head wrapping and we had miranda low have to shout out miranda marine biologist from the natural history museum in london who really supports our events she came and she gave a, a science talk relating to some of the things in the film which was looking at the biomimicry involved in you know the the you know the the materials right um which was really great and i chose to do it during that week because um of the rhythm of that week it's kind of a week where probably i mean everyone's kind of off in a sense now because of covid but that week after christmas you've got all that kind of drama around the whole Christmas day and then come Boxing Day and between New Year's there's this kind of low period with not much going on and probably everyone's at home and off work and that kind of thing and I thought well if if the other if the parents anything like how I felt at that time and my kids were little maybe they want something to do with their kids you know during that week and it's interesting because when we put the event out um I really initially I released 50 tickets so we could take 100 people because of the venue was Mock Mockingbird Theatre um and they were they were sold in you know within hours all of the tickets had gone and that was the fastest I mean it was free but it was still the fastest <laughs> seller ticket so it made me think okay th that there is something about this period where you can fill it with um with something um positive just because of the rhythms of what else is going on and, and maybe what, what would be inspiring to you. And everyone had seen the Black Panther film already by then. But, um, you know, people came dress, dressed up, African, or the kids, some of the kids came in superhero stuff. But it was really, it was a coming together. And, and for me, it was very much in the spirit of, of, of Kwanzaa. And what, what would have yesterday have been? What's the 29th? Is that the collaborative? Um, yesterday, what we, what we on today? We're on... Cooperative economics. Okay, right. Well, anyway, it was yeah, for me it encompassed all of it together because we came together. We, families came. We watched the film. We enjoyed ourselves. We did the drumming and 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 different things. And of course, we we learned from Miranda around the biomimicry, which is really cool. So, what's the next event coming up? Oh, actually, at half past eight. <laughs> so, <laughs> in twenty five minutes, we're replaying Sound as a Weapon which was part of Blast Fest Weekend uh, that Juceline kindly co-hosted uh, with me. And so um, if you tune into that on, on, on YouTube, is that something that you can um, share? Have you got the link, Charlotte? Um, I'll get it up. Yeah. yeah. It's in the Facebook group currently. Okay. Um, but yeah, if you can get it up quickly. Cool. So, so if you if you watch that, you'll hear from Natty Mark Samuels from the African School in Oxford, um, uh, Chloe Seabright, who is a machine learning engineer at Apple, and Dr. Mark Richards, who is a I'm not going to say astrophysicist because he's not. What is <laughs> what is it? Astronomy. As, as atmospheric physicist yeah, from I Imperial remember. College in London and Wasifa Showcase uh, playing the music. It's a nice event. And you also see me and Juice as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, yeah, it was a great event and it, and it really plays well as well. The, the part that I saw of the first section, um, it, it really, really was good to be able to take it in again as well. The, um, the other part, the uh, the, basically the Black British civil rights story was uh, amazing to, because we were a bit busy that day, yeah. but, um, able yeah. to take it in a lot more, you know, um, so do check that out as well for yeah. anyone. So that's Oliver Hippolyte Bishop, um, coolest political commentator in the UK. <laughs> and uh, that's on YouTube now as well. So you can watch that until 
midnight 1st of January. Yes. And um, so we're going to close up, uh, check that out. Um, you ju did you just share the link, Charlotte? Um, uh, did you? Is it? I haven't, but I can. Um, and also for, as you just said, the, the period, um, especially after Christmas Day and that lull, is something to keep in mind because there's so, especially in today's times, um, to extend whatever we call it, whether we call it Kwanzaa, Kwanzaa Plus, or whatever we want to call it in, in future, um, there's so many people that aren't as Christmassy as maybe yourself who haven't always got the family to go to. And over the years, I've, I've um, done little things like little just drawing events in unbox like on Boxing Day or New Year's Eve and things like that, just for those people that haven't got that big family to go to. And, mm. you know, not everyone's talking to their brother or their cousin and their aunt and not everyone's got people. People have passed away. A lot of people have, have, have left this year, you know, in a, in, a, in a surprising circumstances. So also within that, again, harvest and food to be mindful of that and gift giving and time as much as we can, because obviously COVID, but as much as we can share our houses or our space or our time and, and give basically. And it doesn't have to be money. We always think, you know, oh, I haven't got enough money. I need to buy this and I need to buy that. People are making all the jokes about the PS5, how much it costs and who you got to sleep with to, to be able to afford one. But maybe you don't need to, to, to do that. Maybe you can play some, some great PS2 games um, with each other or, you know, I'm being serious. Like those are the best games, you know, you don't need all 25 buttons to play them. You know, you don't need your feet and 700 hours of time. You can just, you know, get some super bomber man on the go with some, some nice biscuits and, uh, and some tea, you know, that, that can be the, the biggest thing ever, you know, uh, for anyone who's ever spoke to a homeless person or person on the street or a rough sleeper, you, you watch the genuine, the genuine people, you know, when you've, if you've bought them something or talk to talk, the fact that you've stopped and talked, mm -hmm. forget the money, forget the food, the fact you stopped and talked. Mm -hmm. Like so many people, no, sorry, sorry, not now, I haven't got any change. Stop and talk, you know, that, that's part of the harvest right there as well. That's, that's some of the best food you can ever get. Mm. An exchange of what is valuable, we can exchange value and that doesn't necessarily, which, which is a gift, it's an, an exchange of gifts, doesn't necessarily have to be a material thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the beauty of it, I think, definitely, knowing that it's something so authentic and natural and um, the idea of community and togetherness is, there's no, like you said, it doesn't cost a million pounds, it doesn't cost a hundred pounds, it's just something very straightforward and it's about energy and time and, and where you choose to put that and uh, it's a very grassroots thing which is beautiful. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Um, your background, Rachel, what is that? Who is that? It's it's Yayoi Kusama. She's a Japanese artist and I absolutely adore her. Um, so yeah, this is one of her hand paintings um, that she's done well, she did it. a very long time ago now. It was from the 80s, maybe. Right, okay, I love it. It's a uh, suit. <laughs> Every time you appear and you come on the screen, <laughs> I wake up, you know? Like, <laughs> it's great, it's great. Anyway, um, is anything, is any uh, questions from anybody out there or is anybody, is anybody out there? <laughs> Probably come after. Right, okay. Um, so if there's anything that anyone wants to, to put forward for their, you know, any, any of this, um, do so now or forever hold your peace. Um, or, or are we gonna wrap up? Did you say you're gonna wrap? We can wrap up, yeah. <laughs> gonna wrap, yeah, please wrap. <laughs> A rap about Kwanzaa. <laughs> um, next year. I'll, I'll... <laughs> That'll be your gift to us. Yeah, yeah. In private. Handmade gift. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it's been great. Thank you, guys. Thank you for, um, for you know, just take, again, time, for, for giving of your time and, um, and taking part in this. It's, uh, when, you, when you, it was Charlotte's idea for anyone listening and it's interesting that Charlotte had said, oh, do you, do you know about this thing called Kwanzaa? It's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, do you want to talk about it? I'm like, oh, okay. And I'm so glad that you did, because I could, you know, knowledge and information is interesting because 
what's old to some is always new to somebody else and we can get quite blase and that's the thing about um getting older or getting mature they, they realize there's a difference between getting older and getting and being mature and maturity is the awareness that you might already know this but it's new to someone else you can still become um enthused about talking and, and it has enthused me again it's reminded me of some things that i forgot it's made me have to check up a little bit and also hearing your experiences with it and your awareness of it is is also part of that infusing as well so i really give thanks for that and then also a couple of days later i was talking to anita and she's like yeah maybe we could do something around kwanzaa and i was like oh this this is in the air you know this is a this is in the air so i really appreciate that of everybody um coming through today so once again uh yeah, just say peace, people. Charlotte, Rachel, Anita, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Juice. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's been great. Thank you. Uh, do I have to sign people out? <laughs> no, 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 yeah. So, yeah, so it's the end of our Kwanzaa discussion 2020. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> let's go watch Sound as a Weapon. Yes. Let's go good. watch Sound as a Weapon on YouTube. And, and there's still tomorrow as well to look up to see what you need to be doing and you know getting involved with so mm. make something yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 but yeah the last gift giving day is still coming yeah. <laughs> and, and and that's the thing as well isn't it um it's never the last giving day you know all the, right. all the all the things we've just said it's like those principles we we get caught up on on you know good bad positive negative it's it's all within us the positive and the negative the light the dark the, the all of these seven principles, they should be there every moment mm. as, as together as possible. You can focus on one for a minute or for an hour or for a day, but they're all supposed to be there running uh, uh, concurrently. You know, they're supposed to be there with us at all points in time. And, and that's for the gift giving as well. And the, the, the time and the love as much as you can, you know, obviously there's times to, to hold back as well, but that's also part of the, those same principles, you know, where you take your own, uh, your own faith, your, your, your own personal kind of Kwanzaa as well. But it's, it's something to really go forward with. Um, so I, I really appreciate that as well, the, the gift giving. Um, one of the traditions that I've always had that Molana Karenga put is the libation. Libation. <laughs> with water. You can do it with water, but some of us do it with Holy Spirits, you know. <laughs> um, and you to the to the four directions, and also being in mindful of, of ancestors and those who've passed, and to, you know, to cleansing as well. That's why people you'll see rum used in a lot of, or or white spirit, let me say, used in a lot of traditions around the world. And it's not to get drunk. It's not to get blazed or get high or get. It's, a, it's about cleansing. It's the same way that you can use it to, to clean a cut or something along that, that way through the ethanol. But it's also about connectivity and there's, there's a reason it's called a spirit, you know. Um, that's one of the traditions as well, libation. Not, al not necessarily alcohol, but something as pure as possible, like the grain and, and the, the, the white spirits are purer and closer to the grain. Again, um, the harvest again, you know. Yeah, so... Cheers. 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 Harambe. <laughs> right. I need a Kwanzaa mixer. <laughs> Help me get out. Right. Oh, thanks, Juice, for, <laughs> for hosting that and for um, Anita and Rachel for being here as well. And um, you really made Kwanzaa, you know, more real in my head and more, okay, you know, yeah. It's giving me food, food for thought. Mm. <laughs> Thank you too, Charlotte. Yeah. Rachel, cheese. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. See you guys at the um, weapon. All right. Um, weapon well, on YouTube. See you all later. And um, if I don't okay. speak to you guys in between, have a great New Year's. Yeah. Um, yes, you too. Whatever calendar you keep, you know, uh, I keep several different calendars. And so I have several different New Year's. And, um, and I'm serious about that as well. I, I really do. <laughs> so um, it's, it's 15,000. It's nearly 6,000. 
it's also going to be 2021 and um, it's been great being with you and I'll see you on the other side. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Take it easy. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.